this is Zoe from Fox and Moon Tea. Today I want to share a story with you about endangered tribute teas. And teas over history can fall out of favor. So what was originally a very popular tea maybe 200 years ago, people are no longer interested in. And as a result, tea producers will start to change what they're producing to meet their customers' interests. And over time, these tribute teas can disappear. And to me, that's a great loss because it takes centuries and generations of knowledge to pass down the, what's needed to produce a tea. And that experience for so many generations of appreciating a particular tea is seeped in history. And for me, is a connection to that time and place. So being able to experience those teas as they were made hundreds of years ago connects me to that time and I find that really valuable and fascinating. So I want to share with you a story. Uh, a few years ago I was antique shopping because I like to collect and I came across this tea tin and just the, it, the tea tin in itself was a beautiful object. And the label as you can see is coming off of the tin. The tin is oxidized, it feels like it's pewter perhaps. But looking at the tin, I was like, ah, you know, there's no year on it, but I'm guessing maybe 1910 to 1930s, not really sure, it could be older. And I can make out on the label, uh, Tak He and Company, Wu Lung Tea from China. But I'm not familiar with Tak He as a company, and I was not able to find information on it online yet. And Wu Lung, I'm assuming is, uh, Oolong, even though it's spelled L-U-N-G. And so, you know, I was like, this is an excellent find. I'm very excited to have this tea tin. And then I realized there was tea inside. So I'd like to share this tea with you today. I was waiting for a special moment and why not today? So there's a little paper in there with it, and I'm not sure if that was part of an original wrapper or if that was just used to cushion the tea at the top. And I will show you what the leaves look like. So the leaves are, they look to be very darkly oxidized and they are long, um, medium to long and twisted on the edges. So I'll also post pictures, detailed pictures, so you can see that better. So they're dark brown, rusty in color. There's a little bit of lighter areas on some of the leaves. And by the appearance of it, I would guess maybe a da hong pao or um, could be a darker roasted tiquan yin, but I'm used to tiquan yin's having a tighter roll on the leaf. So I'm not entirely sure what this tea is. Let's find out. So I steeped this tea for about a minute and a half right before starting this. And I brewed it at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. And normally I would actually do it a little bit lower in temperature, but because it's an older tea, I'm, I wanna make sure I pull out some flavor. And for this smaller Gaiwan style, I used about a teaspoon of tea and I steeped it for a minute and a half. So this is what the liqueur looks like. And as you can see, it's a really beautiful orange golden color and it's pretty clear. There's not too much particulate on that surface. Let's taste this tea. Well, first I must smell it. So it smells a little bit like a pu'er, a little earthiness, which I'm not surprised because it is it has been aging like a pu'er would naturally. But yeah, there's a really nice smokiness. There's definitely a sweetness and underlying kind of savory note. Something slightly spicy. Let me smell the leaves as well. Yeah, I'm picking up on a spiciness, maybe a little bit of a raisiny element. Mm. 
yeah. So there is a smokiness to this tea. There's a little bit of a bite in the back of the top of the tongue. It's pretty smooth, it's a little bit drying. It's definitely a sweet note. It's more of a higher note. Mm. It's very nice. So based off of the flavor, this reminds me of some Royal Grois that I've had. So some rock oolongs from Muishan area. Um, it could potentially be a Da Hong Pao, but it's a little faint if it were to be in that family. It's definitely a dark roast oxidation. And you can see from the first infusion, the leaves still have a lot of life in them. So I'm definitely gonna brew this multiple times and probably enjoy it throughout the day. Thank you for joining us. This is Zoe from Fox and Moon Tea. And if you have any ideas on the origins of this tea in terms of production style, what type of tea it could be, and year, I would love to hear about it. So please add some comments to this post and maybe we can figure it out together. Enjoy the tea with me. Thank you.